Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, uh, verses 22 through 33. Then he made the disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, be not afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I think in discernment, this is something that um, I found was the case when I was discerning entering the order. We can often think of it like this. We think discernment is the process of picking the right answer or opening the right door to the rest of our lives in the midst of an endless number of doors or options. And there is a single right answer and there are almost an infinite amount of wrong answers. And so we think discernment is this process by which we kind of work things out in our mind by prayer, by speaking to people to find the right door, um, which to a certain extent, you do want, you know, to find the quote-unquote right path for yourself. But the wrong and difficult part of this kind of view of discernment, the part that brings much anxiety and stress, are all of those other doors that we would label the wrong way or the wrong options in discernment. The problem with this view is that eventually it becomes less about responding positively in love and generosity to a call that Jesus is offering to us. It becomes more about avoiding the wrong answer. We are fearful, we are almost paralyzed and unable to continue moving forward or making any significant decisions because we will only do it if we're absolutely sure that we are picking the right door that God wants for us. But this view is fundamentally opposed to the view of, of Jesus, the portrait of Jesus we see depicted uh, in the passage that I just read. There we see Jesus, uh, a peaceful Jesus, a calm Jesus in the midst of tribulation, only asking for faith from the disciples, from Peter specifically. He only asks for faith for his yes so that he can walk on water. Jesus will do the rest if Peter just responds positively. It is not a mind test, it is not a trick, it is not a puzzle, it's just an invitation. You see, if we think of discernment less as one right answer among all these wrong answers, we begin to think about it in terms of what is a path in my life that will lead me to greater holiness, to be able to love more deeply, to be able um, to share myself, to give more of myself, and to really make me more alive then Jesus will lead us there. Because it's all about the intent. It's all about our goal and the question we're trying to answer. The question we should be trying to answer is not what is the right answer and what are the wrong answers, but how can I love God? What path that is presented to me seems the most attractive? What path will enable me to continue walking on water in faith? We begin to sink when we only focus and get kind of compulsively um, obsessed with doing the right thing and avoiding the wrong thing in terms of discernment. What this brings to mind is a false view of discernment that is very much against 
uh, Dominican spirituality and the thought of Aquinas as well. Um, in this view of, of discernment, you could call it kind of a, a, a dualistic approach where maybe I'm feeling a certain thing and I'm attracted a certain way, but I'm paralyzed in fear because I think God might be wanting me to be doing something else contrary to what I want to do. That might be the case, but we can reassure ourselves that if the, the foundation of our discernment is earnestly seeking to be good, to love God, to love our neighbor, and just to search for that path in life that will bring us more close, will bring us closer to Him, then we don't need to approach discernment in this dualistic way. God acts on our natural impulses and our desires that are, you know, trained and conditioned towards seeking Him. So a few practical things that we can do in the meantime. Um, it's not going to be you know, the same, obviously, given our current circumstances, but we can still make significant strides towards discerning our vocation even during this time. The first thing, I think, is to put yourself in the proper mindset in prayer. Like everything I've talked about, approach prayer not by asking God, you know, what is the right answer? What is my path? What do you want me to do? But just ask God to grant you the peace and serenity to accept the fact that He loves you and that He wants nothing but the best for you, and that He truly wants to lead you into your vocation, even if it's not entirely clear, entirely clear what that is. Tell Him that you trust Him, and that you just want to love Him and love others through Him. And so with this framework of prayer, then you can make a few practical steps to discern with something concrete, to see if those concrete things you know, spark something within you. So right now you most likely can't go and you know, visit a community of religious because of, of the regulations or um, visit a group of priests, but you can call a vocation director or maybe if you know some religious you can speak to them over the phone just to have some sort of concrete experience with which then you can discern, you can test kind of in the background of this disposition that you've developed through prayer. So I encourage you all to cast aside a spirit of fear and anxiety when everything else in the world right now seems to be centered on those things. Discernment can still be centered on the peace that Christ offers us. He asks us simply to have faith, to walk towards Him, and He will lead us where we need to go. God bless you and know of our prayers for you all during this time.